Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani. Today's video is gonna be on the root cause of gray hair and premature graying. We're gonna dive into the root underlying physiological and biochemical causes of why it's happening and some simple steps that we can do to help give us the best chance to reverse it. Before we dive in, smash that like button, it really helps the YouTube algorithm. Also, put down your comments below about your experience with gray hair, things that have helped, things that haven't really helps. All right, let's dive in. Why does the hair turn gray? So first off, here's our hair follicle, for instance. This is the follicle. This is called the melanocyte. Okay, these same things in our skin. We have the same things in our skin here too. And then inside is the melanin. So this is what gives it color. This is one of the things we're looking at here today is the melanin. Right, when we look at balding, balding focuses on the melanocyte, graying focuses on the melanin. So just keep that in the back of your head. And there's similar mechanisms here, similar nutrients, similar mechanisms. So one of the first things that happens, the key thing is we have an increase in oxidative stress. That's one of the first dominoes that has to fall. What's the cause of oxidative stress? Oxidation, nothing more than when you lose electrons, that's called oxidation and your body has to use anti-electrons, anti-loss of electron compounds called antioxidants. Oxidant is a loss, antioxidant essentially is a free elect electron trying to come in and stabilize that compound because cells not stable, increase free radical stress, increase metabolic damage to that part of the body. So oxidative stress is the first thing. With increased oxidation, we have decreased function of an enzyme called catalase. This enzyme is strongly influenced by glutathione and glutathione precursors. We'll talk about those later on. And then what happens with decreased catalase, we start to see a increase of hydrogen peroxide. And hydrogen peroxide is very inflammatory to the melanin. So hydrogen peroxide right here will come after and attack the melanin, not good. So when we have adequate levels of glutathione, for instance, glutathione comes in, it knocks that extra oxygen off the hydrogen peroxide, and it turns it into water, right? And that's why we need glutathione, because that helps neutralize the hydrogen peroxide, turns it into water where our body can flush it out, no problems. Methionine reductase is another interesting enzyme as well. Uh, methionine reductase is strongly influenced by selenium strongly influenced by selenium, and we'll talk about that down below. Selenium is also an important precursor to glutathione, so they kind of feed forward on one another. And of course, methionine and sulfur-rich amino acids also influence methionine reductase as well as catalase, very important. Now, of course, there is important nutrition that we already talked about, we're gonna go over below as well, more in depth, that play an important role. So fast forward, vitamin C, really important, increases glutathione in the red blood cell. Selenium, like we just chatted about, sulfur-rich amino acids from high-quality animal products, also plant products that are rich in sulfur compounds like broccoli and your cruciferous family and your asparagus and your onions and um, I would say cabbage a lot of your, your green veggies. Now, if you have a FODMAP issue or a SIBO issue, those foods may bloat you. So just be mindful of that. It may be what you need, but your gut may not be able to handle it. So stay tuned. So nutrition, we'll go more into those. And then, of course, thyroid hormone plays a huge role. T4 and T3 play a huge role on your melanocytes. And it's, T4 and T3 stimulate, can stimulate melanin, and of course, melanocyte growth. Melanocyte growth. That's why when we see low thyroid hormone, one of the major things we can see is hair loss, especially outer third of the eyebrow, of course on top of the head. So getting adequate thyroid hormone will also help with the color of the hair because it does influence melanin. Found a really good review on this topic that I'll post in the description too. So what can we do about it? So we can also work on the underlying physical, chemical, and emotional stressors that are causing the oxidative stress. If it's an emotional thing, a work or a family stress, or poor sleep or poor diet, fix that, of course. If there's inflammatory foods like gluten or refined dairy and processed sugar, fix those, right? Make sure all the, the key emotional stressors are under control, relationship stuff, family stuff, whatever it is, get it under control. Nutritionally, we can bump up nutrition. Like we talked about, vitamin C, selenium, 
iron, copper, glutathione, we can take it liposomally. We can also give a lot of the precursor nutrients like cysteine, glut glutathione, cysteine glutamine, and glycine to help increase it. Uh, sulfur aminos, sulfur rich veggies, these are all very, very important things we can do. We can also increase antioxidants as well. One of my favorite adaptogenic antioxidants is ashwagandha. Studies have shown two to three grams of it or two to three thousand milligrams really help with hair color as well and melanin. And then also curcumin is really helpful as well. Resveratrol, really good antioxidants that can help decrease the oxidative stress, which then will help improve the catalase. And then when the catalase is up, it'll decrease the hydrogen peroxide. So it's basically this formula in reverse. Also, we gotta work on fixing the gut. If there's digestive issues, like I mentioned with the, the gas and the bloating with the sulfur-rich veggies, we may have some SIBO or a parasite infection or some kind of a, a bottleneck in our digestive system that could be affecting us from digesting, absorbing, assimilating, and utilizing a lot of those key nutrients. And then also thyroid. If we have low thyroid hormone, there could be an autoimmune component and which could be affecting the thyroid hormone level. So we gotta get that looked at as well. Of course, selenium and important nutrients play a big role with thyroid hormone production as well. So you gotta fix kind of everything at the same time to get optimal results. So it's Dr. Jake here. If you wanna dive in deeper to why your hair is gray or why you have hair issues to begin with, click down below, schedule a consult with myself and our colleagues. We'll put some references down below as well. And if you enjoyed today's content, whack that bell button, thumbs up, Really appreciate it, and I look forward to connecting with y'all very soon. You guys have a phenomenal day. Take care. Bye now.